Welcome to Theatre Corner. I'm your host, Michael Taylor. Theatre Corner was created as an ongoing effort to create more diverse interest and involvement in the theatre scene. This episode is brought to you by our generous sponsor, the Westgate Hotel. Our next guest is the incredibly talented <laughs> Terrell Donnell Sledge. Welcome to Theatre Corner, uh, brother. Appreciate you for having me. So very nice to have you here. And so it's great to, to sit down with the local San Diegan. Ah, yeah. And you're actually an original San Diego uh, actor. Mm -hmm. You're originally from San Diego? Yeah, born and raised all the way until, ooh, about 2004. Uh -huh. And then started that whole journey across the Northeast and then finally made it back. Wow. I got a chance to see you in your, your, your first, the first theater work I've seen you in mm -hmm. was uh, Wind in a Breeze. Yeah at the Signet Theater, actually. Uh, what, what was that play like for you? Ooh, uh, that, you were the lead actor. I was, I yeah. was. Um, and it was a, a story that really paralleled my own um, about a young man who left his hometown mm. in pursuit of a dream, um, had that experience, and decides to come home for personal reasons uh, that the rest of his community doesn't know about. And it's about him coming back and kind of deciding who he's gonna be mm. in the place where he kind of was first formed after having had experiences that have changed him, changed his world views and kind of expanded his understanding. Um, and so the play was very much that for me, coming back to San Diego. And wow. And when you say coming back to San Diego, you're talking yeah. about, you're talking like it's a uh, matter <laughs> of factly, but you, you left San Diego and you went and studied, you, you got your BFA at uh, Yale mm -hmm. uh, University, uh, Ivy League. Yeah. And then you, that wasn't enough for you. <laughs> <laughs> then you, went, you got your MFA in theater from Brown University, mm -hmm. uh, it keep staying on that Ivy League track. So uh, that's very much in character with your, with your own life experience. Yeah, well, definitely. I was always, I'm wondering, what was that experience like for you in back-to-back -back Ivy League schools mm -hmm. for, for a black man? It was complicated, um, mm. not really because of the institutions themselves, but just the journey, really. Um, I actually first said that I wanted to go to Yale when I was in the fourth grade, um, <laughs> because I read an article about Courtney Vance and Angela Bassett and mm. Edward Norton and all these actors who, you know, my fourth grade self said, oh, they're the ones that, you know, I want to replicate um, right. and imitate. And so I said, well, if they went there to get training, and that's where they needed to go to uh -huh. learn, then I want to go there and learn as well. And so I kept saying it, and fortunately was surrounded by people who never said that I couldn't, mm. um, but instead asked me, so what does that mean I need to do right. in order to make it there? And just kind of continued with that vision all the way until I actually got into Yale. And of course, over time, I learned that you have to go to undergrad before you go to graduate school, which <laughs> I did not know <laughs> in fourth grade. Um, but yeah, it had been something that I always said was my dream. And then with little cousins and nieces and all of that, who had been listening to me, realizing that there comes a point when you have to actually make good on the things mm. that you said you were going to do um, and not wanting that not happening to be a discouragement of their dreams and the things that they say they want to do. Wow, wow, incredible uh, role model. That's, <laughs> Trying to that, be, yeah. No, it's, it's, that's beautiful. And uh, was there, is there a particular person that influenced you uh, in terms of t acting teacher along, along that uh, path? I'll say consciously was uh, Jenny Hamilton actually at the Community Actors Theater who was my first acting teacher ever. Um, mm. And really by chance, I have a brother who's five years older than me and he had always been really into performing. And so as a kid, we went there for their um, weekly class, mm -hmm. but I was too young to participate. <laughs> but you know, things being what they were, sending my brother to one place and me somewhere else wasn't really gonna work out right. for my mom as a single mother. So yeah. I sat in and observed his classes until Miss Hamilton told me to get up and participate. And then from there, I just kind of never stopped. So uh, this, is, this is the first being bit by the acting bug. What, yeah. what age was it? Um, this was, I was in second grade. In second grade, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're thinking about acting in the second grade. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and at the time thinking, oh, I'm just doing it because my brother wants to. Mm. But then in fourth grade, I actually uh, performed in my first professional show, uh, the Ra A Raisin in the Sun, uh. and got to see 
you know, adults doing this mm -hmm. um, and pursuing it as a career and understood that, oh, it's more than, you know, the skits and the things mm -hmm. that we're doing for the community. This is something that can have a broader audience that you can really uh, get training in and perfect in a way. So that's, that's developing an interest. At, at, at what point did you realize, wait a minute, this is, this is more like something to pursue as a mm. that you, you mm -hmm. had to, there had to be a point where you made a commitment. Yeah, yeah, that's actually great that you noted that. Because um, <laughs> I think I actually tried to quit at almost every major milestone when mm. I went from elementary to middle school, from middle school to high school, high school to college, I always said, well, I do so many other things. I don't need to only do that. Mm. Um, but over time, I realized that I would say I'm not going to do it. I'd see a show or uh, uh. go to a production and then just feel wrong for not being a part of pushing that forward. And so I'd really say it was probably going into my senior year at Yale, um, where I was a theater studies and psychology double major. Okay. And I decided that I was going to drop my psychology major with, I think, about two credits left, because uh, I knew that if I didn't, I would pursue that and not mm -hmm. ever force myself to take the acting seriously and to really do what it took to have success there. You've done television, you, mm -hmm. you've done film and theater. So what's the favorite? Oh, I would say theater, because of the energy that you get from the audience, mm -hmm. being able to have a longer process of development with your cast. I see. Um, but right now, what's more exciting is <laughs> TV and film, uh -huh. because in theater, you're never going to have someone working on a tattoo on your arm while you're talking to the director, and then 10 seconds later, you're in the scene again. <laughs> um, and so that's just a fun challenge to actually have to be in the moment. Like, even in theater, you know, you say we're in the moment because anything could happen. But it's a different kind of moment when you just have to be able to go into it and turn it on. So. Uh. I've heard actors say over and over again that how much they appreciate the, the theater foundation, though. Because not yeah. all actors go start in theater. Mm -mm, Some go straight all. to television. And so how important do you think that that is? Or? Um, for me, it was probably the most important thing, um, just being able to personally have that rigor mm -hmm. and just training in theater and then um, having to work in the classics or having to work in um, comedy or whatever it may be. And then on top of that, having to add the element of an audience that may have um, a cultural barrier that you have to overcome, oh, right. or right. Um, maybe it's just a story that is really foreign to them, or the language, whatever it may be. Um, there's that extra element of, okay, I have to push myself to a new level this time around to make sure that we succeed in telling this story. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to unfairly put you on the spot. You're, <laughs> right. you're, you're an Ivy League <laughs> theater trained actor, you know, okay, you're, okay. you're the real deal. So I'm going to put you on the spot and uh -huh. I'm going to say, let's, let's, can you do just a, a little bit of Shakespeare? What, what does that uh, sound okay. like coming from your chops? Uh-huh, all right. Okay, <laughs> I'll do this. Uh, this is actually something that we've been working um, with some of our youth at, um, the arts education organization okay. I work with. Um, okay, cool. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing and them to die, to sleep, to sleep, a chance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. <laughs> My brother. <laughs> All right, hey, hey. do the damn thing. <laughs> That's, that's very nice. Right? No, appreciate it. That's, that's deep. And, and, and Shakespeare. That's mm -hmm. Shakespeare and August Wilson. That's, that's my favorite yeah, classics. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's important that we, we, we make sure people know that August Wilson is definitely oh, absolutely. an American classic. Actually, when I made that decision to drop my psychology double major, uh, working on the piano lesson actually was a really big factor in that. And one of the 
first times I was on stage and got to really feel like I was telling a story that had the depth and the expansiveness just of the experiences that it was speaking to mm -hmm. that I could get lost in. Wow. I just kind of really enjoy doing that. Were you playing Boy Willie? I was, yeah. You, you, okay, mm -hmm. so you played Boy Willie <laughs> in piano lessons. So the controversy, is who was right? In your opinion, Ooh. Boy Willie or oh, Bernice? Why did I even bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> um, to sell the piano or not? Personally, I think that they both had part of it right. Right, right. Um, I think that Boy Willie's drive to do the next thing mm -hmm. and to use the foundation they have to catapult to a new place right. was right. I mm -hmm. think that he just didn't realize that there are some things that you can sacrifice for the cause and some things that are the reason why the cause is still going. Oh, very and good. I think that's what they weren't able to get to an understanding around. Oh, man. That's why I like hanging out with you Ivy League people. <laughs> <laughs> very good. So uh, what I really love is this. You, you have a nonprofit mm -hmm. uh, called REACT. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Okay. Well, it's REACT. It um, stands for Reimagining and Elevating Artistic Concepts and Talent. Mm. And really, it was a close friend of mine, and I decided that all of the work we're doing in theaters, um, you know, teaching with different programs at different schools kind of around and across the country, that there are so many kids in the very neighborhoods that we grew up in mm. that have as much, and in some cases, more talent than we even have, mm. but don't have the opportunities. And while there are a lot of theaters that are kind of creating those initiatives, there's still a disconnect in the program being available and the people who need it knowing that and just kind of finding that connection. And so that's kind of where REACT came from. It's a program that is really using arts, um, theater, dance, music, to just empower youth, to uh -huh. give them those critical thinking skills so that as they're seeing images on their TV screens, on their phones, they're able to track the story that's being told about people, about our country, about um, our circumstances, our opportunities. And then also, I know for myself, performing was the way that I can imagine myself doing things mm. that otherwise people might say I was crazy to imagine myself doing, like going to an Ivy League right. school. But if I get to go on stage and perform as a lawyer or perform as a doctor, mm. then even just through that imaginative exercise, I'm able to envision myself in a path that may not have been one that I was automatically going to consider. True. Um, and it just expands your understanding of what's possible. And that's really the goal, is to use the arts to expand our understanding of what's possible and to enable communities, individuals to identify their voices, but then also amplify them. And, and you actually have a, a, a performance of some sort coming up. Yeah, uh, um, we're doing our first um, theater and performance camp right now. Um, we're actually partnering with uh, the Valencia Park Malcolm X Branch Library. Okay. And so working with some of the youth that are in that neighborhood and then from across um, Southeast San Diego. And we're going to be doing a kind of review production of um, The Lion King and uh. some short little vignettes <laughs> that the kids are developing. Yeah. So cool. And, and these things, clearly, I mean, they, they, they cost money. Yeah. And so you, as a nonprofit, you're open for donations. Where, where could someone go to donate for your nonprofit in support of your, this program you have coming up? Yeah, um, anyone who wants to support, um, you can go to www.gofundme.com slash react, R-E hyphen A-C-T. Okay. Um, and anything helps. Uh, mm -hmm. We are, of course, doing this to make it available at an affordable price. And right. so a lot of um, what we're doing is done through sponsorship and donations. So any bit that can help. Okay, so there's no, there's no minimum donation and there's no maximum no, donation. No, it's whatever your heart <laughs> tells you you need to do. Right. <laughs> You're opening up minds, mm -hmm. you know, it's, of, of young people. It's, it's incredible. And so you yourself, what projects you have coming up for yourself um, as, a, as um, an actor? Yeah, um, for, I guess, probably 
a good part of the fall, I'm going to be kind of on a different side of it. Uh, I'm actually developing a piece right now that we're going to be workshopping that centers on the question of who's to blame when violence arises out of difference, mm. um, whether that's cultural, um, societal differences, and kind of how the media plays into that. Um, really touching and centering on the events of the LA uprising of 1992. Okay. Um, and just exploring all the levels of that experience um, and even how the media played into some of the conflict between different groups of peoples. Hmm. Um, and then I'm also going to be doing some work on a novel that I have been working on, uh, oh, doing right. a final draft of that to kind of get that out there. And that's centering on um, just the experience of growing up in communities where you can't necessarily see what the next phase of your life looks like, which mm. is something that I definitely experienced. <laughs> um, you know, getting to that point of applying to colleges and realizing that I didn't know that many men in particular who looked like me, uh, who could tell me what to expect. Right. Um, and realizing that to some degree, I myself then have to take it upon myself to make sure that I don't disappear in what I'm now achieving and what mm. I'm doing, but actually can be that to those coming up right now. Wow. So what kind of uh, advice do you, do you give these young people? And, mm. and even mm -hmm. if, if you were talking to a, a young actor, what, what kind of advice would you share? With um, I would say probably the most important thing I could share uh, is that you need to know for yourself what you're capable of mm. um, before you ever even start to give weight or value to anyone else's opinion. I think that particularly in the arts, which can sometimes feel like a very subjective field where you're going in and someone else is supposed to tell you if you're good enough to be in this show, if you will know what you've written is good enough for people right. to invest in. I think that in any environment like that, you have to know before you went in the door if you know you can do it. Mm. So that then when you get that feedback or you have that criticism, you then can run it through your own filter of, okay, is there truth to it? What does that mean about the growth that needs to happen? And what do I need to do to make that growth happen? As opposed to saying that, oh, this didn't work out, so now I must be wrong. Mm. And um, I think that's something that has gotten me through a lot. Um, you asked me kind of about my experience at different schools. Right. And I mean, it happens everywhere that there are those people who believe in you and those who don't. <laughs> um, and I think one of the greatest things that happened for me was actually having a cousin who, uh, when kind of Kwanzaa was kind of emerging, played the joke of saying that my uh, Swahili name was Kuchichagalia, <laughs> which means self-determination. Oh, okay. Um, and I think she said this when I was in probably kindergarten, and so I ran with it. And mm -hmm. even after I learned that, oh, okay, I get it, it's one of the uh, principles, I decided that I liked it right. um, because I really could get behind the idea of me being the one to decide what I'm capable of and what it means to be me, what my name means, mm. um, the opportunities that I can pursue and the things I can achieve. And that was my way of saying, oh, you don't think I can get straight A's? Okay, mm. well, I decided that mm. I can, so I'm gonna do that and then give you the certificate. Um, <laughs> you know, you said, there were people who said, oh, you shouldn't apply to Yale because that's you know, not likely. And it's like, okay, I see what you believe, right. <laughs> but I've made a decision about what I'm capable of, and I know that I'm willing to do the work to make it happen. Um, so yeah, I would say really define for yourself what it is that you're capable of doing, and then hold on to that. Wow, you are, you are one inspirational brother, <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> and so before you go, uh, let's, let's remind the viewers, uh, your, your, your nonprofit is called REACT. Mm -hmm. REACT, um, you can find us at www.reactcollective.org. Awesome, and that's where they can go and they'll find mm -hmm. a, There's a, a link donate, to the a link and everything. To the GoFundMe. Beautiful, brother. Yeah. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be watching you. I'm gonna be watching your career because I know it's just gonna, <laughs> it's, it's going, it's just going only in an upward direction. Oh, and I appreciate, I appreciate you as a, as a, as a talent. 
and, 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 and as a positive example as a, as a young black man. No, it's, thank it's you. really thank quite you. beautiful. Trying to follow in the footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for coming by Theater Corner, brothers. Absolutely. Spending some time thank with you for me. having me. All right. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to another episode of Theater Corner. And we'll see you next time.